हरि ही ओम नमस्ते महोदय शीला शिंदे भगिनी यस मैम निराशीर्यत चित्तात्मा त्यक्त सर्व परिग्रह शारीरं केवल कर्म कुरुवन्नाप्नोति किल्बिशं ललिता रामचंद्रन भगिनी द्वंद्वातीतो द्वंद्वातीतोत्सर ओके नेक्स्ट लक्ष्मी बीवी भगिनी सेम सेम श्लोका प्लीज वंस यस सर यद्रचाला भसंतुष्टः द्वंद्वातीतो विमत्सरः समसिद्धावसिद्धौ च पृथ्वापिन निबध्यते गुड नेक्स्ट विजय लक्ष्मी आर भगिनी विजयलक्ष्मी भगिनी नमस्ते नमस्ते शारदा राजन भगिनी प्रवीलते नमस्ते महोदय नमस्ते ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म भावी ब्रह्मो ब्रह्मणाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म सगेन ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म ब्रह्मणाहुतमणाहुतमेंटर्सा ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्म मग्नो भ्रमणाहुत ब्रह्मणाहुत ब्रह्म 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 हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मनाहुत ब्रह्म गंतव्य ब्रह्म स कर्म सीना ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मो ब्रह्मणाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्यम 
ब्रह्मेण तैव गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना ओके वन मोर पर्सन सेम श्लोक कृष्ण पावनी भगिनी नमस्ते महोदय नमस्ते ब्रह्मार्पणम ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्मणाहुत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना गुड नेक्स्ट के ललिता भगिनी यस सर दैवेवापरे योगिनः पर्युपासते परे 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 उपजुहती मीनिंग ऑफ दिस श्लोक so now what we are doing is that we are discussing the various kinds of yagnyas yagnya means uh, sacrifice sacrificial offering when you offer something it means that you are giving it to somebody it is not your own so even when you are offering it the agni many of the people who have done the homas or some of you have observed you would have seen that you say that indraya namaha we offer it for indra okay indraya idam this is for indra na mama it is not mine so that is attitude attitude of offering is that you give it up whatever you have so there are different types of yagnas and one of the yagnas that is being talked here is by the yagna the, the yagnas done by jnanis uh, jnanis and sanyanis sanyasis so for them they have the attitude is that they see everything as brahma especially jnanis know that whatever is their self is brahma and anything that they see in the manifest is the manifestation of brahma so everything is brahma so for them in the yagna brahma arpanam means the ladle that they use for the sacrificial sacrificial fire that is brahma whatever they offer as a havi 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 is supposed to be rice in this case you can take ghee also the ghee that is being offered in the fire is also brahma the agni in which it is offered that is brahma brahma now <laughs> the person who is offering is a brahma brahmana hutam ब्रह्मैव तेगन गंतव्यम दिस हेल्प्स हिम टू रीच ब्रह्मा ओके दे देमसेल्फ बिकम ब्रह्मा ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना एवरीथिंग एवरी एक्शन दैट इज बीइंग डन इज ब्रह्मम सो दे सी एवरीथिंग इज ब्रह्मम सो सर्वम ब्रह्ममयम जगते सर्वम कल्पितम ब्रह्म सर्वम कल्पितम ब्रह्म इज चंदो के उपनिषद वेद वाक्य दैट एवरीथिंग दैट यू सी इज ब्रह्म ओके सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी डिस्कस लास्ट वीक we also discuss this in three different parts one is like a sacrificial fire that is being offered the second thing is that we also looked at it from the perspective of uh, when you are offering in the case of a naivedyam you do a naivedyam and then you take it as pranayaswaha apanayaswaha etc we take it inside so we have a fire inside ourselves so we offer to the various kinds of prana okay so the pers- the food that is being offered is can be taken as havihi the hand that is using to take the food can be taken as arpanam brahma arpanam brahma havihi is the food brahma agna is the fire we have inside our cells in terms of the hunger fire brahmana hutam is being consumed by the individual and this is a kind of yajna by which somebody can go to they can reach brahma and whatever they do is also brahma karma 
So that is one way of looking at it. Also, visa. Uh, the other way of looking at it was also that even a lecture is being given. So some 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 uh, yes, satsang is going on. The person who is giving a satsang, he is talking. So that means that what is he offering? He is offering from his mouth. So Brahma Arpanam. Okay. So whatever he is talking can be Arpanam coming out from him. That can be the means of offering it. What is that he is offering? What is that he is offering? Jnana. He is offering teaching. Okay. And he is offering the teaching for what? Brahma No. For the knowledge, fire of knowledge that we have. By whom? By the teacher. So if you look at that way, we will be able to look at every kind of action. Once you come to that level of understanding oneself as the Brahma, every action also can be uh, taken as example or a metaphor for the same sloka, Brahma Arpanam Brahma Havihi. So this is only showing that the attitude of sacrifice that we have in our Vedic, uh, thing, Vedic uh, times. And uh, this is primarily done by a Jnani. A Jnani looks at everything as Brahma. Then the next sloka, this is, also, this is this one we discussed last, we chanted last week. Here it says, Daivam Yeva Apare Yajam. Apare means others. So earlier, first, the earlier sloka was talking about jnanis. Now it is talking about yoginaha. Yoginaha in this particular sloka refers to karma yogis. Karma yogis are the people who are doing the various actions with an attitude of karma yoga, which is primarily for the antakarna shuddhi. But everybody in the process of karma yoga, they have their own ishta devatas. Somebody may worship Gangadajalapati, somebody may worship Ganapati, somebody may worship Devi. So they have got different types of uh, uh, deities they try to, they, they do the puja. So here, daiva meva apare yajyam yogina parjupasate. The karma yogis, they invoke some of the devatas of their choice. And by that, whatever they do, the invoking with the attitude of Karma Yoga is also a yajyam. Okay. Daivam apare, some other people, that is Karma Yam, Yogin, that is others, Karma Yogis, they will be invoking the God in the, in the process of doing various kinds of religious things in the house or in the temple by which they invoke and that is also a yajyam. And then... The first line is for the karma yogi. The second line is Brahmatna Vapare Yajnam Yajnena Eva Upajukhvati. This is the second line is for sannyasis. Sannyasis are also in the process of understanding the Atman. Okay. They, karma yogis are cleaning up their uh, antakarana and then they want to get jnana and then become uh, a kind of uh, uh, jnani. Whereas in the case of uh, Sannyasis, they have given up all the worldly actions and they are only continuously contemplating in terms of understanding the various texts and various uh, uh, available uh, means of knowledge and then they want to learn it and then know, get that jnana. That's the only difference. They are yet to become jnanis, then they are sannyasis. They are only in the contemplation through learning. Karma yogis, first they want to clean up their antakarana and then learn also to become a jnani. So here, what is happening is that these people, Brahmatna Apare, Apare, Apare is in the case Sanyasis. Apare means others. Others in this case refer to Sanyasis. Sanyasis, the kind of Yajna they do is that Brahmatna, the knowledge of Brahma Agni is knowledge of fire. In the knowledge of fire, they do a Yajnena Upajukhvati, Yeva Upajukhvati. They are using the knowledge of fire and in the knowledge of fire, they, Yajnam in this case refers to the individual self, they give up their Ahankara because Sanyasis also have Ahankara. Only when the Ahankara goes, they become Jnanis. So those people, by contemplation, by lot of learning, they try to know what is Brahma Agni, that is the knowledge of fire, in that they try to give up their Ahankara and yajnena eva upajuhvati yajnam. So they give up their ahankara and they are able to sacrifice their ahankara in order to gain uh, Brahma. So the Brahmagnav, Brahmagnav is the knowledge of fire in that they want to try to see how they can get the Brahman by sacrificing their own egos. That is the, in the case of sannyasis. So Bhagavan is what he is doing is that he is telling different ways of people doing different yajnas. The first sloka, the earliest sloka we saw was the yajna done by a jnani who has already realized himself, who sees everything as the 
manifestation of Brahma. In the first line, he is talking about uh, Karma Yogi. Second line, he is talking about Sanyasi who is yet to become a Jani. Okay. We will further proceed now. And he is going to talk about different people, how they are uh, trying to have the same capability for getting the knowledge which will only make them to become self-realized souls. So next. Srimati Bhagini. Namaste. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Both that is me, Dirga. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Ni is not, it is not uh, Haswa Dirga. Okay, Madhya. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Once again. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye. Sayya Magni Shujukhvati. Good. Next. Sai Lakshmi Bhagini. Namaste Mahode. Namaste. Shabdha Deen Vishayananye. Shabdha Deen Vishayananye. Shabdha Deen Vishayananye. Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati. Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati. Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati. Vati Shabda Dhin Vishayananye Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati Shabda Dhin Vishayananye Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati Shabda Dhin Vishayananye Indriyak Nishu Jukhvati Good. Next. Raja Shwari Shivashankar Bhagini. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye Sanyya Magni Shujukhvati Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye Samyya Manik Shujukhvati Shrotra Dhinindriyan Yanye Samyya Gnani Shujukhvati Sanyya, you can say. Okay. Sayya Magnishu Jukhvati. Okay. Next. Lalita Ramachandran Bhagini. Shabda Deen Vishayananye Indriya Agnishu Jukhvati. Shabda Deen Vishayananye Indriyagni Shujuvati Shabda Dhinvishayan Yenye Indriyagni Shujuvati Okay. Vishayan Anye. In the first line is Yanye. Second line is Nanye. But actually the word is Anye. Because of the compounding of the word, it becomes Yanye in the first case. Second time it becomes Nanye. Okay. Shall I repeat it? Shabda Dhinvishayan Yanye Shabda Dhinvishayan Yanye Shabda Dhinvishayan Yanye Indriyani Shujuvati Shabda Dhinvishayan Yanye 
I hear it as Juvati, the Jukvati. Ha should be half, half matra. Jukvati. Shadda Dindishaya Nanye Indriya Mishu Juvati. Jukvati. Juvati. Not Juvati. Jukvati. Juk. Juhu Beach Juk. in Bombay, no? Okay. 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 Next. Sheila Shinde Bagini. First line two times. Shrotra di Nindriyanan. Shrotra di Nindriyanan. Sayamagni Shujuvati. Shrotra di Nindriyanan. Sayam Agni Shujuvati. Next. Sri Lakshmi Hachar Bhagini. Madam. So second line, sir. Second line, two times. Shabda Deen Vishayananye Indriya Agni Shujuvati. Shabda Deen Vishayananye Indriya Agni Shujuvati. Good. Next. Lakshmi B.V. Bagini. Yes. Both the lines, sir? Both the lines once. Thank you. Shotra dinindriyan yanye Sayyamagni shujukvati Shabda din vishayan yanye Indriyagni shujukvati Good. Next. Sharada Rajan Bagini. Ah, yes. Both the lines. Yes. Shrotra dinindriyanyanye Sayyam magni shujuhvati Shabda din vishayananye Indriyagni shujuhvati Next. Krishna Pavani Bhagini. Namaste. Namaste. Shrotra dinindriyanyanye Saya Magni Shujukvati Shabda Deen Vishaya Nanye Indriya Agni Shujukvati Okay, one more person and we'll go to the meeting. K. Lalita Bagini. Yes, sir. Shrotra Deen Indriya Nanye Saya Magni Shujukvati Shabda din vishayananye indriyagni shojuhvati. Good. So now let us go to the meaning of this. Uh, if you look at that way, uh, we have seen that Bhagavad Gita is a moksha sastra. And uh, in Bhagavad Gita, we have seen that Bhagavad Gita su Upanishad su Brahma Vidya yam yoga shastri. Primarily, it is focusing in terms of Brahma Vidya, whereby one can understand his own true nature to be Brahma, Brahma Vidyayam. Yoga Shastra is, it is teaching them the means available to become a Karma Yogi. Because Karma, so whatever Yoga it is now teaching is all Karma Yogi. So Karma Yoga is one path by which we get Antakarna Shutti to gain knowledge and take Moksha. Other one is Jnani is also take Moksha. So ultimately Bhagavad Gita is talking about two different pathways. One is Sanyasa, the other one is Karma Yoga. So these are two things only available in terms of Moksha. So we are very clear about that. Now, uh, before I get into this sloka, I'll just take five minutes for uh, 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 revising something which we talked long time back, a couple of months ago. The thing is that the purpose of human life, I told, is primarily to understand oneself. So if you look at that way, the goal of anybody in the whole world will fall only under four different goals. It cannot be different than these four. That's called Dharmartha Kama Moksha. I think all of you might have heard it many times in temples and even house when they do a Sankalpa, they say Dharmartha Kama Moksha Pala Siddhi uh, Pala Siddhyaktam for only for that. So there are only four different Purusharthas. It's called Purushartha. Four different ways by which one can pursue his goals when they take a life of a human person. So Instead of Dharmartha, uh, Dharmartha Kama Moksha, I will talk, talk it in the other way. It is Kama Artha 
dharma moksha this is the four things so somebody will be primarily pursuing kama kama means desire okay at the end of the day what is that everybody is looking forward to they all want to be happy happiness is one thing which is a pursuit for everybody whether you are going to pursue oh, a line a or line b or line c at the end of the day whatever you do all of us we may be in different different fields different different places different different uh, way of upbringing at the end of the day all of us want to have happiness that is ultimate objective of a human being so some people pursue kama kama means desires for example when you pursue kama kama is outside of you okay you pursue lot of things that are available in the world for example the example that we talked earlier was that somebody is interested in a cho uh, chocolate ice cream so when he eats chocolate ice cream he is very happy okay now when you look at a chocolate ice cream uh, cup you do not find that they have written the ingredients is the ingredients they have only put as sugar milk chocolate blah 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 but they have never put happiness anywhere okay but you feel that when you eat chocolate ice cream you are happy so the nature of happiness is in chocolate ice cream or it is within you that is what is the first question that you need to ask so when you look at that way you find that the nature of happiness is not in chocolate ice cream the nature of uh, uh, happiness is in myself because it is not a nature of that nature of me is happiness but i think that this has given the happiness if that was the case then they should have put in the chocolate ice cream that this is going to have sugar this blah 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 plus happiness also they would have put so that when you eat you also eat, get happiness so that is not the fact the second thing is that first time you eat the ice cream you are happy second time you take one more ice cream are you going to become doubly happy no you may be perhaps happy three four five ice creams sixth ice cream i give it to you is i don't want this i am done with it which means that you are fed up with the ice cream also at some time which means that is not the one that has got happiness which can be provided to us happiness is within us right so we thought that that is going to provide happiness to us so kama pursuing for the sensory pleasures of ourselves from external objects is all going to have a limitation we feel that they are giving us happiness but the happiness is not the nature of them happiness is only a nature of ourselves so that is a kama kama you have to understand that nature of happiness only us it is not in the outside thing that our sense organs are asking for first thing that we need to understand second thing is artha what is artha artha means we want to have security in life what is security well, how do you do that education employment property vehicle then power then the way others look at us all these things provide us a sense of security the sense of security is for what we want you at the end of the day very happy ourselves so the happiness is in the objects that you are going to procure like a house and car is giving you that inner satisfaction and inner security or it is your own thing it is irrespective of that you are able to get inner security is what is important for example you may buy a house for some time you may be very happy and secure later you will again find that i am not happy with this i may have to go for something else so that's continuously going to change which means that what you are pursuing is artha will not be able to provide you the security even today even some of the big shots they still feel insecure within themselves because they feel within themselves it is not a trait of the things that you are pursuing maybe job or position or power it's all will be able to provide you your way of living right but it does not provide your own inner security and inner inner security is only going to give you happiness and peace of mind it does not provide it is having a limitation on that so if we have to understand that that is also having a limitation in terms of providing inner happiness satisfaction and the nature of happiness and inner security and uh, abhaya without fear is not in those things it is within me only so that is the second thing we have to understand so it is not in those things artha is external to me and it is cannot take care of my inner problem we feel that it is addressing our inner problem second the third one is dharma dharma is doing good things when you do a good thing what happens you are able to get punya and papa so you get only punya when you get punya what is the outcome of that you will be able to get a better life so at the end of the day what is that you are getting you are getting a better life comfortable life all those things for that what do you do you keep doing some prayers somebody will do a lakshmi puja somebody will do sahasrama 
somebody will do all those kinds of various kind of religious oriented people they do all those kinds of things which are going to add to the punyas for them and punyas are only going to make them live a one more life next janma they will get a better life but that is again you are seeking something outside for one more life but it is not going to help you for moksha so moksha is own your own inner self so when you look at kama artha dharma you will realize that all these three things you are trying to get inner happiness and inner peace by looking at objects which are there in the outside world you feel that the objects in the outside world are going to provide you with happiness and inner satisfaction so what is the moksha telling moksha is telling that outside will not be able to provide you are looking for things inside happiness and inner peace you are looking for inside why do you go outside for that you go inside that is what is moksha sanyasa So you have to think, go inside, and not try to go outside. Okay. So now, what is happening is that to have a satisfaction within ourselves, we are trying to go outside to come inside. So that those external objects, whatever we are trying to go towards, uh, the karma, artha, and uh, and uh, dharma is all a kind of a broker coming in between us and our own happiness. We you use a broker rather than straight away going into that. They are middle men. If you look at the business term, they are all middlemen coming in terms of getting it yourself. It is karma, artha, and dharma. So why do you want to go through middlemen to reach you? Get rid of all those things and get into you straight away. That is what is all Vedanta still because Vedanta sir asks Vedanta is asking you to go inside and identify yourself. You are a purna. Now when you come to this loka, you understand that shotra di indriyan anye. Anye, you look at the first pada uh, anye, juhvati. So some other people they burn it off or they offer it as agnya. What is that they do? Shotra di indriyan anye. Shotra di means what? Hearing is one of the senses. Shotra di means hearing and all the five senses. Okay. So in all these five senses are the ones which is bringing the external things to us, external of world of objects. We are able to experience only with these five things. so they they understand that these things cannot give me internal happiness so they are able to ensure that shotra di indriyan samya magnishu they feel, they are trying to keep them under control they are trying to they know that this external world of objects cannot really provide me happiness so they try to bring in a self control of the senses by samya magnishu that is self control is a kind of agni and bringing it under control is the kind of yajna so these people are the ones who are able to discipline their senses in terms of relentlessly pursuing external things <clears throat> i am not telling that one should not pursue external things relentlessly pursuing external things thinking that they are going to take care of you is what they are talking about that and so one anye jukpati some other people they are able to do a yajna <clears throat> by keeping their senses under control disciplining their senses that is self yajna so if you are able to ensure that you are able to control your external uh, searching for happiness bringing it under control itself is one of the yajnas okay the next one next line is telling saptadi vishayan anye what do the sense uh, senses go after they go of sense objects so he says that sense objects saptadin vidayan anye anye means other people whatever is the sense objects they are trying to ensure that when their own senses they are able to offer as yajna which means that with the help of their senses they are able to control what is coming in as a world of objects right so what is the meaning of this is that disciplining oneself Disciplining, disciplining the sense organs is the first one that is talking about. Shotra di indriyan samya magdishu. So controlling them is a kind of way of a yajna by which you are able to control your sense organs by just not pursuing into everything relentlessly outside. The second thing is that this is not going. Second thing is what is there is the a world of objects you are able to ensure that you have got the gate at your senses. and that person itself does not allow this to further magnify it gets burnt at your senses level itself so he is talking about both the things one is senses not going out is 
by your own control. Control is the gatekeeper. He ensures the sensors does not go out of control. Second thing is the sense objects are getting into control by the indriya. That is the senses controlling the sense objects, not getting into impact you. So this kind of control itself, he says, is a yajna. Yajna means in this yajna, he says, some people are able to control their sense of organs by their own, the control is a uh, agni. If other people are able to use the sense, senses as agni in controlling the sense objects from coming into them. Because only when external things don't come into us, we'll be able to develop ourselves internally. So he's talking about different types of people who are able to do different types of yajnas in terms of their own personal development. I hope you are able to get the high level understanding of that, slightly confusing, but it is primarily talking about not to pursue things outside of, the, outside of yourself. So you need to have a control on your senses and sense organs. Senses are being controlled by you, which itself is yajna. Sense objects being controlled by your own senses is also a yajna. So that is also a yajna. Jupati is offering or getting burnt. Okay, that is the meaning of that. Next. Srimati Bhagini. Yes, Madhya. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Prana Karmani Chapare. Prana Karmani Chapare. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Sarvani Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Next. Sai Lakshmi Bhagini. Atma Sayyama Yoga Dau. Atma Sayyama Yoga Dau. Atma Sayyama Yoga Dau. Jukwati Jnana Deepite. Jukwati Jnana Deepite. Jukwati Jnana Deepite. Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Good. Next. Rajay Shuri Shiva Shankar Bhagini. Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Next. P.B. Veena Shri, Hani Shri Bhagini. Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Veena Fani Shri Bhagini Vijay Lakshmi Aar Bhagini Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Juhvati Jnana Deepite Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Jukwati Nyana Deepite. Good. Next. Lalita Ramachandran Bhagini. First line two times. Sarva Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Sarva Indriya Karmani. Prana Karmani Chapare. Next. Lakshmi Bibi Bhagini. Second yes, sir. Times. Yes, sir. Atma Sayyama Yoga Gnau Jukwati Jnana Deepite 
आत्मशयोगाग्नौ जुक्वति ज्ञान दीपिते प्राणकर्माणि चापरे आत्मसंयम योगाग्नो जुह्वती ज्ञान दीपिते गुड नेक्स्ट शारदा राजन भगिनी सर्वाणींद्रिय कर्माणि प्राणकर्माणि चापरे आत्मसंयम योगाग्नो ंद्रिय कर्माणि प्राण कर्माणि चापरे आत्मसंयम योगाग्नो जुहती ज्ञान दीपिते हे ललिता भगिनी यस ंद्रिय कर्माणि प्राण कर्माणि चापरे आत्मसंयम योगाग्न जुह्वती ज्ञान दीपिते सो वॉट भगवान इज टॉकिंग अबउट इन दू श्लोका प्रीवियस वन एंड ऑल इज ट्राइंग टू डिप्लेन द इंडिविजुअल डिसिप्लेनिंग वन सर्व सो दट दे आर एबल टू हेव अ कंट्रोल ऑफ देर body mind complex body senses complex world of objects etc so that they are able to understand and know themselves or in the case of karma yogis when they are able to have these kinds of practices they are able to develop a kind of capability for them to absorb the knowledge so here in this shloka also is continuing about disciplining oneself here atma samyama yoga no atma samyama samyama yoga no is meditation so when you look at meditation what happens you are able to ensure that you are keeping all your bodily parts with under total control okay initially there may be a difficulty you may start shaking your leg shaking your head scratching all those things will happen but once you have a practice you will find that the body becomes absolutely still okay so that means that the body has been totally brought under control so the of the the, the uh, uh, what is that uh, ऑर्गन्स बट over time we can even control the mind so that the thoughts are kept under control the thoughts do not go anywhere here and there so body the five sense organs five five object five organs of action and the mind every one of them is under control when you are going to be in meditation atma sayyama yoga now that is meditation is another fire what is the kind of fire jnana deepite it is invoking that jnana in that by this particular process we are able to discipline the entire the sense action sense organs uh, organs of action and also the mind and you are going you are able to bring them under control because this is an yajna you are offering that is these 11 things organs of action organs of sensing and the mind you are offering as a kind of a yajna in the sacrificial fire of jnana deepa the invoking the jnana you are able to offer them as a kind of yajna so this is another way of yajna so yajna does not mean you are only keeping a fire yajna means you are offering it so you are able to ensure that all these things are offered they are not able to uh, be out of control so this is some people they take to meditation and then they are able to absolutely ensure that all these 11 things which can do lot of things they are kept under control that is kept under control by invoking the fire of knowledge jnana deepa 
so this is another way of ensuring the uh, self development in terms of knowing oneself so sarvan indriya karmani prana karmani cha pare atma sayyama yoga no atma sayyama yoga no in the fire of meditation juk which is lit by the jnana deepa jukvati is all burnt or given up what sarvan indriya karmani prana karmani that is all the organs of action whatever actions you are doing all the activities that you do all the sensing etc that you have if, and also the mind all those things are resolved when you are going to be in this particular thing by invoking in the case of a meditation the agni agna means meditative contemplation you are able to get this kind of control where you are able to manage all these 11 different things which can otherwise go out of control okay so this is all talking about self disciplining oneself so that they are not going to be running after the things outside of them and they are able to have the indriyas and the organs of action and also the mind under their control and whatever actions that you are doing whatever uh, 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 means that you are doing is itself called a yajna whatever you are doing is called that itself is called a yajna so this is what some other people do okay next rajeshwari shivashankar bagini द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा ये तपो तप है तप है मीन्स तपस द्रव्य यज्ञा तपो यज्ञ तप है यज्ञा सो तपो यज्ञा आई हैव स्प्लिट इट रॉन्ग दिस सर ओके द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा यज्ञा हाँ यज्ञा हाँ ओके माय बुक द्रव्य यज्ञा द्रव्य यज्ञा हाँ तपो नो 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 नॉट देर द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा हाँ द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा हाँ द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा हा योग यज्ञास्तता परे योग यज्ञास्तता परे योग यज्ञास्तता परे द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा हा योग यज्ञास्तता परे द्रव्य यज्ञास तपो यज्ञा योग यज्ञास्तता परे द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा योग यज्ञास्तता परे नेक्स्ट साई लक्ष्मी भगिनी स्वाध्याय स्वाध्याय ज्ञान यज्ञाश्च स्वाध्यायज्ञानयज्ञाश्च श्रीमती भगिनी यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा योग यज्ञास्तता परे द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा योग यज्ञास्तता परे द्रव्य यज्ञास्तपो यज्ञा योग यज्ञास्तता परे नेक्स्ट विजयलक्ष्मी आर्भगिनी 
ಯಜ್ಞ ಶ್ರೀಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಿತ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾಧ್ಯಾಶ್ಚಾ
parting away with the materials that you have with you you may have rice you may have material money you may have clothing you may have certain things like pens and notebooks etc so somebody will go to your schools and then distribute notebooks and pencils and pens and other things somebody will give uniform that's all materials you are doing it as a kind of a yagna giving that also to people is called a yagna what is that that's going to give make you you are giving it out when you give out what you have and you say it is no more mine your attitude changes your your antakarana becomes cleaner and cleaner so people also take to dravya yagna dravyam need not be only rice or uh, such kinds of ghee etc it can be any kind of material which is going to be useful for other people and who are needy is a dravya yagna okay so that is the way of cleansing oneself that is a yagnam by itself the other thing is tapo yagna tapaha is what there are different types of tapas for example somebody is going to be having ekadashi fast i have not done that so far some of you might have already done that i am sure that by doing ekadashi fasting there is a tremendous amount of change in the attitude of an individual i i have not done that so if some of you who have done that might have experienced that so ekadashi fasting apart from cleansing up the physical body also provides a tremendous amount of cleansing action on one's own mind in terms of the thought process in terms of the way they are able to oh, control their mind so some people take up to those kinds of tapas also some vak tapas not eating or not observing silence for one full day is again a tapas so we'll be talking about these things in the subsequent chapters etc so some people also resort to tapas so tapas is also a way of self controls then other people apare yoga yajna some people will do all the kind of ashtanga yogas so the yogas they do not with the attitude of building up a body but with the attitude of religious thinking okay i am doing this kinds of yoga for the goodness of my own mind and soul i am doing this so some people resort to various types of yogas also in terms of ashtanga yoga what has been told one of the ashtanga yogas is the pranayama some people have pranayama god is bhagwan is going to talk about it in the next shloka so that is another way of yajna so yajna does not mean offering only something into the fire but this is also another way of yajna okay the other one is swa adhyaya swa adhyaya means reading yourself you under you take the bhagavad gita book and then read or you come to a class and then listen to that why, why do you do that jnana yajna so you want to gain jnana so you do lot of work in terms of your own so you do your own self study etc you attend some classes to enhance your knowledge etc so this is another way of jnana yajna so swa adhyayanam swa adhyayanam means every day reading some chapters of bhagavad gita or reading some and making something to understandable by you or doing some kinds of chanting etc is all coming as uh, swa adhyayanam a swadhya swadhyaya jnana yajna cha and some people also follow some kind of vrata pratas means they will have some kinds of austerities and vows they take and then accordingly they have different types of vrata some puja or puja vrata may be there or some kind of offering vrata will be there some charity offering vrata will be there so they have all these kinds of things that each one of them can do any one of these kinds of things in order to take care of their own way of looking at things and also for cleansing their own mind and antakarana so that they are able to be Uh, improving their capability for absorbing the jnana so he says that this is also other way by some people do various kinds of yajnas all these things are also yajnas all these yajnas are aimed at disciplining oneself at the end of the day by doing it supposing you go to your school and give the uniform to so discipline yourself your thought process changes your own outlook changes your own service for the people changes so by the dravya yajna tapo yajna fasting so all these things are all primarily disciplining oneself from the body mind complex so he says that these are all the different ways by which one will one can focus in terms of disciplining oneself and it is telling that it is up to you you can decide whatever you want you can do but primarily ensure that your intention is for antakarana chuti which is required as a karma yogi all of us are karma yogi yogis and for a karma yogi this is what is required and by any one of these things you will be able to continuously cleanse yourself so that is what he is telling okay we will go to the next shloka we still have one more shloka and then we will finish lakshmi bivi bagini 
अपंगेजुवती प्राण प्राणे पान तथा परे प्राणापान गतिद्वा प्राणायम प्राणायाम परायना प्राणायाम परायना नेक्स्ट के ललिता भगिनी यस अपने जुह्वती प्राण प्राणे पान तथा परे प्राणापान गति रुद्वा प्राणायाम परायना सो वील टेक अबाउट दिस श्लोक ऑल्सो नाउ नाउ अपानम अपाने जुह्वती प्राणम अपानम इज प्राइमरली इनहेलेशन ओके Inhalation is apanam, pranam is exhalation. When we say somebody is dead, we say prana gan. Okay, so exhalation is uh, pranam. Inhalation is apanam. So if you look at that way, we have got some people now. Most of the time, we are not conscious about our breathing at all. Okay, once we decide that I am going to look at my breathing, I am going to do prana yama. Then I start looking at how do I breathe slowly. I slowly breathe in. and then hold it inside my lungs for some time and then slowly breathe it out hold it for some time and again i slowly breathe it so i am very consciously breathing and this exercise is called pranayama so pranayama is a regulated way of breathing why pranayama is done it has been very scientifically proven that pranayama with pranayama there are multiple positive effects on the human being in the body and also in terms of mind so there is not only going to help in terms of providing a fantastic oxygen supply to the entire body system which is required for the wellness of the body apart from that it is also going to have a very very good effect on mind in terms of making the mind very steady very very peaceful and very very calm and uh, it will become a very kind of contemplative mind is possible with pranayama so now what is the some people use pranayama as also one yajna here he says pranayama is yajna so what happens apane apane is inhalation somebody is inhaling prana prana and then juhvati pranam so apane exhalation so what they say is that exhalation is taken as an offering to inhalation because inhalation and exhalation are alternating exhalation goes inhalation comes inhalation goes expiration comes this goes and that comes okay so it is taken that inhalation is taken as an offering to exhalation and exhalation is taken as an offer to inhalation and that itself is considered to be yajna and they are also uh, looking at it in terms of how they are consciously regulating their prana okay so in the case of pranayama inhalation as i told you is called apanam apanam and then what they do is that the entire lungs get filled up and it is something like a pot gets filled up with water okay when the lungs get filled up with air it is called kumbha so the kumbhaka so then there is a situation where there is a kumbhaka where the entire lungs is filled up okay then you inhale you then hold the breath for some time that is called kumbhaka where the entire lungs is filled up and then you have got exhalation wherein what do you do you go do uh, pranam and then you exhale everything out exhalation is totally emptying your lungs called rechaka so kumbhaka rechaka is all there so they have a very good timing for all these things they say one is to four is to two or something they say the different types of practices that is available so what they say is that by in the offering the inhalation as an oblation for the exhalation and exhalation as an offering for the inhalation that itself is becoming an yajna and somebody if they are able to regulate their prana so prana prana apana gati rutva then not only the speed at which you breathe but prana apana gati rutva so apana gati means what when you inhale you inhale and then hold it that is you do not Uh, do anything it is your lungs is full and you hold it that held is situation of uh, that's called kumbhaka where it is purvaka it is entirely thing is filled up is called kumbhaka in that particular portion when you are not breathing anymore and holding it inside is apana gadi rutva then similarly you exhale then hold 
You don't breathe immediately. Just give a small amount of time when you don't inhale, exhale, but you are just going to hold it. So that is called uh, prana gadi rutva. So prana gadi rutva, apana gadi rutva, prana apana. Yeah, that is uh, offering the prana to apana and apana to uh, prana is all a kind of process of pranayama. That is also a yajna which is followed by some people. And this yajna is definitely going to be very, very helpful in terms of the body as well as the mind. Okay, maybe tomorrow, we'll, if necessary, we'll talk about this further. After this, I'll uh, close the class for today. Om. Shotra dhinindriyanjanye Sanyamagnishu jukhvati Shabda dhinvishayananye Indriyagnishu jukhvati Sarva nindriya karmani Prana karmani chapare Atma sayyama yoga now Jukvati jnana deepite Dravya yagnas tapo yagnaha Yoga yagnas tapare Swadya yagnana yagnascha Yatayas samshi taurataha Apane jukvati pranam Prane panam tatapare Prana pana gati rudva Prana yama parayana Om poor namada poor namidam poor nat poor namudachade Poor nasya poor namada ya poor nameva vishishade Om shanti 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 Harihi bom shi guru